Radio, how to easy learners. We are on paper two. We've just done paper one and we're going to zoom in on paper two. And what is the requirements that you'll have to meet in this exam? So in this video, we'll be looking at mechanical analytical, right? Which is about 15% of the question paper. Then in the next video, we'll look at the low keys and the low keys of cams that you can expect. We'll look at isometric drawings and mechanical assembly in the last video on this series to get you to your maximum 200 marks. For a start, let's look at what you can expect as part of mechanical. So this covers question one and question four, uh, 30 marks for the analytical and 90 marks for the actual assembly that you'll do. Let's look at some of key, the key things. The first thing is this will be in third angle of the graphic projection. Uh, working drawings with non-sectional, sectional, half-sectional, half and partial sectional views of complex mechanical assemblies. Okay, that's important. Include the following, your title, your scale, layout planning, center lines, hidden detail, cutting planes, hatching, dimensioning, notes, symbols, all of that important. Bolts, construction of bolts and nuts. There is a video specifically addressing that in the How to EGD series. Washers, spacers, all fixtures. Different types of sections. Know them, aligned, revolved, removed, etc. Conventional presentation of common features. Format and content of working drawings and title box. Detailed drawings of individual components. Basic welding can be asked. Machining and surface treatment. We'll actually look at that in the papers we are discussing. As well as tolerances. Okay. And then, of course, all of this need to conform to science. Right, so here is the first question, mechanical and analytical. When you open it up, don't be overwhelmed with what you find here. It's most likely going to look like you've never seen before. Take a deep breath and just start familiarizing yourself with the actual content and the title blocks at the bottom. Uh, make sure you, also, of course, read your question in full and glance over this before we start. Okay, what I do first of all is I look at the title because this is the key to what is shown here. Two lever door lock. Then I look at the parts list and I try and determine what exactly it is that I'm seeing. This is going to be third angle of the graphic projection. So you're going to have your front view. What I see from the left is drawn on the left. What I see from the right is drawn on the right. What I see from the top is drawn on the top. So what is this view here, which is they sneaked in. I'm sure a very few of you actually have ever worked with a bottom view, but this is the bottom view. Okay. Don't be caught out with this only a bottom view and then your parts list and all the details here most of our questions we will get answers to in this let's look at the first one what is the title of the drawing two lever door lock who prepared the drawing drawn by sipo on what date was the drawing approved approved by andy you see how i'm just reading this off it's marks given to you what is the drawing number it's going to be fine here drawing number dl04 how many manufacturing processes are required it's right here, manufacturing processes, plate bending, injection, and milling. So if you can read, you can absolutely achieve. Um, how many parts make up the door lock? So that's the first time you're going to have to think, and you're only at question number six. How many parts? Now, if they asked how many different parts, you would have counted one to ten. But because they're saying how many parts, you have to go count the complete quantity, and you end up with 13 parts okay so make sure you read the questions to get understanding of what is required what material is used for the latch cover it's perspex again just reading and you're achieving what is view five called i said that in my introduction it's a bit of critical thinking but you can figure it out this is the bottom view if this is the left right top then this must be the bottom and that's the front now determine the complete dimensions some learners then grab their rulers do not do it. You have to determine it, not measure, determine. In other words, you have to figure it out. And these measurements will be able, you will be able to determine. So let's look at A first of all. It's this big one. If you look at your opposite view, the right view, by adding up and doing a few couple of sums, you get the total of 134. Number B, okay, it's this one here. Now, you again have to search for it. And if you look here, it actually tells you diameter 5 hole, CSK stands for counter sink, sunk, and at 90 degrees to diameter 9. So what they're saying is this inner hole that you see here, that's the one that is diameter 5. And please, you have to have this sign to get your mark for this actual answer. Then at C, 
It's this side here, which you will also be able to determine by calculation. And that comes to 24. And then D, that is right here. Again, you're going to need the upper view and this measurement here to get to your 88. Double check me, please. And then E here is this last bit. Again, right up here, there you find the 2. Okay, so you can see here, I actually determined all of this with relative ease. Then measure the angle at F. So you're going to have to use your... A protractor for that and it's very short please extend this with your own pen uh, ruler pencil ruler and measure that you only have a one degree difference that you can come up with and that was 135 and again you'll have to add the degree name the convention at g let's go find that quickly it's right here and that is when they show symmetry so you're just going to write in there symmetry what type of views produced by the s break at h Okay, this is down here at your key. That is an interrupted view. Okay, remember it's the key is actually longer, but they've interrupted it through an S break. Then what type of section is produced by cutting plane SS? Now we have to go find that cutting plane. There it is. It runs, starts this side, runs. Then there's a two corners and back. And that is a multi-plane. So you've got more than one plane, multi-plane or an offset section either one of the two you actually have to go study this quite a few others that they can ask as i uh, mentioned in my introduction okay and then in the square in detail t is nine by nine so the alternative method of showing the dimension nine nine at j so this is right here up there so j can be nine by nine and the way of indicating that is actually because that's a square you can go and you can go di uh, square and then a9. Okay, that's another way of indicating 9 by 9 by actually doing that symbol. So that symbol there could just have looked like that. Okay, insert the arrows for cutting plane SS. So you see here there's no cutting plane. Which side do we have this arrow? So look, you see the actual section in top view. So if I look from the top, my arrows need to be also from the top. And you're going to have to do these arrows on the actual drawing to have your top view section top view all right how many flat surfaces must be machined okay this is another key question make sure you read flat surfaces must be machined and now here's the symbol for machining okay so there's one two three four five six we're at six okay but remember this is symmetry so we actually have an eight here that they haven't indicated and we actually have another one here so we have nine here which they haven't indicated one two three four five six seven eight i mean eight sorry the correct answer is eight the actual memo is also wrong they said seven but these are the flat surfaces that must be machined eight of them name the direction of lay that must be applied to machine surfaces now there's the actual milling there's the milling symbol and you see that x there is the one that indicates crossed. Okay, so the Greek answer is crossed. With reference to tolerance, determine the maximum dimension at U. Let's go up here. There's a 10. The maximum is going to be 10, 29. If it was the minimum, it would have been 9, 82, for instance. So there they show you the maximum and the minimum. You're just going to subtract that from the 10 to get to that answer. Then in the space below, draw in neat free under convention representing a coil spring. So I'll just draw that for you quickly. It's your straight line, and then you've got your coil springs here going. Okay, and you're going to end it with a center line going all the way through it. Okay, and that's where you're going to get your full marks. It must be freehand. It actually asks for freehand. And then the last one, this is three marks that they give you. I don't know why they keep doing it. Draw in neat free hand, the symbol for the projection system used. Now to get this, you just turn to your last page and you'll actually find that symbol as a gift right at the bottom. You're just going to read it right here. Make sure you do it as neat as possible. Right here, that was question one in last year's paper. Let's have a look at the year before that because there's significant differences in these two papers and I do think it's worth our time to just have a quick look. I'm not going to be answering all of them. I think you should have confidence in answering most of these questions but there's a few that I did highlight for us to discuss. So first things first, 
Make sure again you know what is given. And let's look at number six here. What is view one called? Okay. Now this is straightforward, people. You have two views that was given. We know that this paper is third angle orthographic projection. This is going to be a sectional front view. If you look at where the cutting plane runs through your top view, if I look from the front, this is what I will see. This is your sectional front view on cutting plane TT. All right, next question. What type of section is view RR? So it's removed from the main two views and therefore it's called the removed view. Okay, so make sure there's a couple of others here, partial sections, etc. that you need to know, but they are in your workbooks. Then we're going on to the next one. Name the type of section produced by this cutting plane TT. Now, you can see here that it follows uh, a different pathway. It's not just a straight line. This is when we call it an offset or a multi-plane uh, cutting plane. Okay, multi-plane or offset cutting plane. Then, determine the complete dimensions of A, B, C, D, and E. Again here, it's determined. In other words, don't take a ruler and measure it. What I do want to show you again and highlight is that let's take it number A. They ask for you the radius at A. Okay. It's not easy to find that measurement necessarily in the drawing. Why? Because it's actually part of your title block. All unspecified radii are 4 millimeters. Now, when you answer that, don't just write 4. It's not going to be correct. This is a radius. Okay. And for that reason, you must put your R in front of that. Same with the others. Make sure if there's diameter. I think E's got diameter 7 here. You have to have that sign. Then... Uh, we're going to skip number 10, name the feature at F, if you look at that, now this is a question common in grade 10, and so they can also still ask this in grade 12, okay, remember it covers all the work that you've done from grade 10 to 12 in your final paper, if you look at the um, top view, it gives you some direction as well as this view RR, if you look there, cut through that, that is a rib or a web for F there, and then what is the minimum depth of the thread required for the whole G, so find G, there you can see, now for that you're going to have to look at the top view again, there it specifies millimeter 18, uh, minimum 18 deep, so that's going to be 18 millimeters, okay, number 15, describe the hatching mistake on view 1, so we have to go investigate view 1, we can see here that all the hatching is in one direction, and then it changes, now the fact is this is one casting, so the hatching should be similar in all, all parts of this. So it's hatching in opposite direction would be your answer there at view 1. We're jumping down to 17 with reference to the man machining symbol below. This is this machining symbol here. Match the letter on the symbol with the correct label in the column on the right question. Now, this is also in your workbooks, especially if you've got JPEGD. Make sure you study the um, breakdown on this. But you need to be able to identify, okay, that the direction of the lay is here at D, okay. Then the roughness value is indicated at A. The sampling length is indicated at C. Your machining allowance is indicated at E, okay. Make sure you study these symbols in your workbooks. And then the last question again, in the space below, draw a neat freehand symbol. And you know this symbol is going to be on the last page of your actual question paper. That's a quick run through, to, through mechanical analytics. I honestly don't believe you should be taking longer than 15 minutes on this question because it's where you really, some kids spend a half an hour here and they waste very important time. Make sure you read through this during your actual reading time. Make sure you understand what is asked. And then you've hacked and smacked your question one. We're going to look at question two right now. Mm -hmm.